Hey everyone, Mark here. Today I'm going to be looking at a type of approach that starts with an instrument approach but actually ends with a visual approach called the circle to land. I'm going to explain how to fly a circle to land in a Cessna 208 but the concepts are going to apply to all the general aviation airplanes and flight sim. This is the 8th video in the instrument flying series that I've been doing. In previous videos I've covered the basics of how to do instrument flying as well as how to fly a bunch of different types of approaches like RNAV, localizer, VOR and more. Over the next few minutes I'm going to discuss some of the flight planning aspects you need to be aware of when you're setting up for this type of approach, the different scenarios where you might want to consider using a circle to land and finally I'm going to show you how to actually fly the thing. You'll get the most value from this video if you already have a little bit of familiarity with how to do instrument approaches, but it should still be achievable even if you don't. You're also going to want the working title G1000 mod installed. It's going to make it a little bit easier when you're circling the airport to stay within the correct distance from the runway. Alright, with all that said, let's fly. I'm flying in northern Colorado under instrument conditions and I'm about to begin an instrument approach into Steamboat Springs, Colorado where I'm going to have to use a circle to land procedure to get down to the ground. A circle to land approach is really composed of two different types of approaches. You start by flying an instrument approach to one runway, be it a localizer, RNAV, ILS or anything else. You fly that approach all the way down to the minimum descent altitude that's listed on the chart for a circling approach. And then if you break out of the clouds, it actually becomes a visual approach to a different runway than the one you're currently lined up for. It gets tricky at that point because you're pretty low to the ground and you have to maneuver to land on a different runway, possibly with some obstacles around as well. For that reason, I suggest the first times you actually try to circle to land is to do it in a smaller airplane that you're comfortable flying with. The most common reason you might use a circle to land is to avoid a crosswind on final. I'm showing you an example on screen of what that might look like at Long Beach Airport. That's a case where you could fly the instrument approach to runway 30 down to its minimum descent altitude and then maneuver around the airport to land on a runway with more favorable winds, for example let's say runway 8, assuming that you've come out of the clouds. Another reason you might want to consider a circle to land, and that is the scenario that I'm going to be looking at in just a couple of seconds, is a steep descent rate or an obstruction that means you can't land on the runway that you're flying the instrument approach to. All of that said, really the main reason to do them in flight sim though is just because they're a lot of fun and they're a bit of a challenge as well. One slight problem though is that you won't find all the information you need in flight sim to be able to properly do the circle to land. You'll be able to set up the instrument approach from the flight planning screen just as usual by choosing it from the approach drop down, but there's no info here or on the multifunction display once you're in the cockpit with regards to the visual part of the approach. You'll need to look up the chart for the instrument approach that you're flying down to the minimum descent altitude, either on something like airnav.com or flightaware, or if you have a subscription to something like Navigraph, you'd be set as well. Alright, I'm about to cross the first waypoint where I can start to descend towards the runway. This part of the approach is pretty straightforward, especially since I have the autopilot on. It's going to follow all of the waypoints for me and all I need to worry about is the altitude step downs as I go by each of the waypoints, which I'm going to use vertical speed mode to do. Speaking of which, if you need a refresher on how to use the nav heading and vertical speed modes on the autopilot, I've got you covered with a tutorial for it. I'll make sure to add a link to it in the show notes and right above me. I'm going to review the descent profile now while I've got some time before things start to happen too quickly. Everything looks normal except for the last segment where it says you need a whopping 7.75 degree descent angle to make it down to the runway. A normal descent rate is usually around 3 degrees, so that makes this approach to almost 2.5 times steeper, which is quite the drop. I could cut the power, drop the flaps, and make a very aggressive descent down the runway if I really wanted to, but this is a great opportunity to try to circle to land. What I'll do is fly over the runway at the minimum descent altitude, make a left 180 degree turn towards a tight downwind leg, and then I'm going to turn one more time as I get back to the other end of the runway to make a final approach onto runway 32. I'll continue my descent once I'm on the downwind leg, so that once I do make that turn to base and short final, I don't have nearly as much altitude to lose. Otherwise, it's just going to be impossible to get down to the ground in time. For now though, I'm continuing the approach as normal and I'm continuing to descend as per the chart. 
If you don't know how to read a chart, I'll highly recommend you check out either the localizer video or the VOR video that I previously made or even the RNAV one where I explain in detail how to read the chart and how to execute it in Flight Sim. On top of all of that, I'm also going through my approach checklist to make sure that once I do start the circle to land, everything in the airplane is set up and all I really need to worry about is flying the airplane. In the case of the Grand Caravan that I'm flying right now, that means I need the flaps set to the approach position and I want my power near idle to maintain a speed that's going to be near the middle of the flaps extension range while I continue to descend. Full flaps in the Grand Caravan causes a really big drop in airspeed, so I'm going to wait until I've turned around and I'm coming back on that downwind leg to extend them. That'll give me a bit of a cushion above the stall speed as I'm maneuvering onto the downwind leg, which is always a good thing to have when you're low to the ground. Before I move on to the approach, I do want to remind you if you get some value from this video to please make sure to hit that like button if you haven't already, and consider subscribing to get more Microsoft Flight Sim content. I publish a new video every two weeks with tips, tricks, and tutorials for newcomers to Flight Sim. Alright, I'm coming up on the final waypoint now, and I need to figure out the minimum descent altitude for a circling approach. That info is at the bottom of the approach chart, and it's usually the last row of the minima section where it says circling. It lists the MDA for a category A airplane to be 8,140 feet, so I'm going to continue my descent to that altitude, and then I'm going to level off. A circling approach means you need to stay within a certain distance from the airport as well, and that distance is different based on the category of airplane that you're flying. For general aviation airplanes, you're more than likely looking at a category A, which applies to all planes that are flying at less than 90 knots as they cross the runway threshold. Faster planes like business jets or airliners would use either categories B, C, or D. In the case of this approach, the circle to land isn't available for category C and D, mostly because they need more place to maneuver around the airport and with all of these mountains in the area, it just wouldn't be safe even with a higher minimum descent altitude. You can find the distance for each category of airplane if you google for standard circling minimums, but I'll save you the trouble and say that the distance for a category A airplane like I'm flying right now is going to be 1.3 nautical miles. The easiest way to keep an eye on how far you are from the airport is to adjust the zoom level on the multifunction display on the right. There's a white quarter circle out in front of your airplane with a number next to it, and that's going to tell you how far out that line is. In this case, what I've done is I've set the zoom to 1.5 nautical miles, meaning that after I make my 180 degree turn, that the airport still needs to be just on the inside of that quarter circle. As I'm flying over the airport, I'm keeping an eye on when I've flown past the other end of the runway, and after about 5 seconds, I'm going to start my 180 degree turn towards a very tight downwind leg. The 5 seconds number is a little bit arbitrary, it's just what I know will work well for this airplane with its turn radius. You'll probably have to experiment if you're flying a different airplane just to have an idea of how far you can start your turn and still stay within that minimum distance. I'm going to extend the flaps to the landing position once I've rolled out of the turn to slow the airplane down as much as possible, and I'm going to hold my heading, which is going to be 180 degrees opposite of the runway, until I've gone past the end of runway 32 where I'm going to land. I'm also going to continue my descent now at about 500 feet per minute to start, but as I get closer to my base and final turn, I'm going to increase that descent rate because I've still got about 1200 feet to go before I get down to the ground. That's a fair bit of altitude to lose in a very short period of time, especially considering how much closer I'm going to be to the runway once I turn out on final. Also, don't forget that this is now a visual approach and I need to be keeping an eye on where the runway is at all times and adjust accordingly. I have to time my turn towards base and final while staying within 1.3 nautical miles of the airport again, so I'm going to wait about 5 seconds past the threshold and then I'll start my turn. I still feel like I'm a little bit high here, so I'm also going to increase my descent rate to hopefully make it down to the ground before running out of runway. I'm trying to keep the turn to about 20 degrees of bank, especially since I'm flying fairly slowly right now. It would be easy to end up in a stall if I'm not careful. This turn really combines the base and final turn into one really long turn because I'm flying parallel to the runway much closer than I normally would. It's a really tricky turn to pull off and it takes a fair bit of practice to get it right. 
I probably did about four or five attempts before this one and as you can see I've got it just about right now although I am a bit low and I undershot the turn by a little bit too. If I were too high when I turn out on final I'd probably still continue to land just because I know this airplane has a very short landing distance. I'd just plan on hitting reverse power and the brakes a little bit harder than usual. And if you're coming in too high those first few times you try this as well like I did, don't forget to reduce your descent rate when you're about 50 feet off the ground. That way you can flare as closely to normally as possible with a slightly nose up pitch attitude. It wasn't perfect and I could probably have done a little bit better with more practice, but you should have a pretty good idea now what you need to know to plan and execute a circle to land, as well as why I was saying it helps to be familiar with the airplane that you're flying those first few times that you try it. Hopefully you got some value from this video and if you did please make sure to hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed yet then please consider doing so. My next tutorial comes out in two weeks and in the meantime I'll be reading up on everything I need to know to sound like I actually know what I'm talking about in these videos.